kids, what's going on here today? Have you seen God? Look, you forgot. Can you help me find God? What is God? Hey, buddy. Oh, hi. What's going on? Oh, I'm trying to look for God. Oh. Can you help me find God? You came to the right place, man. Really? Yeah. You know what? Uh, we're going to learn today about the one true God. Oh, that, that's amazing. Yes. Kids, stick around and help us help Lane learn about the one true God. Last week, we talked about the Bible. It's God's plan for us. Yeah. And uh, the next step to that is the one true God. So today, we're going to learn about the one true God, Jesus is fully God, and the Trinity. Those are big things, and they may seem like a lot, but at the end of the day, you're going to have your faith so strong. So stick around, pay attention, help us out. Coming, 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 communion. Oh, well, howdy, kids. It's sure good to see you all here again. I'm here to talk about BDM tea. And guess what? It's still better than sweet tea. And man, I sure do love some sweet tea. We are issuing a new challenge. And this one is for the whole church. And that means you two parents, we are going to raise $1,000 for missions and BGMC. And if we do, Pastor Russ is going to shave his head and his beard. Whoa. We really think missions is important to the word of God. But don't take our word for it. Here's some missionary friends of ours. Hi, Pastor Rustin and Freedom Kids. My name is Joel Charest, and my family and I are missionaries in Mozambique. Now, where is Mozambique? Now, that's a good question. Mozambique is in the southern part of the continent of Africa, right along the Indian Ocean. Another question you may have is, what do missionaries do? And so I brought this soccer ball with me to kind of just share what we do as missionaries in the nation of Mozambique. And so we take this soccer ball into different communities that have never heard about Jesus before, and we play soccer with the kids and the teenagers there. And as they come to play sports, we're able to then after the games, we sit down in the shade and we teach them different lessons from God's word. At the end of our lesson time, we, we serve them all juice and then they go home and we do this on a weekly basis, reaching the kids, playing sports, playing soccer, running around those soccer fields when it's nice and hot. Mozambique is very hot outside, but we run, we play, we have a great time with, with the community, and then we sit down, we teach lessons of, you know, different lessons from God's Word, and then we serve the kids juice. And so we, we do this in, in communities that, that have never heard the gospel before, they've never, they don't know who Jesus is, they, they don't know that he died on a cross, um, they don't know that he raised from the dead. They don't know that he's the son of God. And we teach them all these things so that they can, they can cry out to Jesus for salvation. And so our avenue is through soccer. We're able to go into communities, reach the kids, tell them about Jesus using soccer balls just like this one. This particular soccer ball was purchased by boys and girls just like you through BGMC, through Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge. So I wanna say thank you to you um, all of you at Freedom Kids, that you have making you are making an impact around the world as you give to BGMC. So I want to say thank you from my family to you. Thank you for giving to BGMC. Thank you for enabling us to have soccer balls so that we can go into different communities and reach kids, boys and girls for Jesus. So thank you so much, Pastor Rustin. Thank you, Freedom Kids, for all that you are doing so that we can reach more and more boys and girls for Jesus. May God bless each one of you. Uh, Joel is just one of the nicest people I've ever met. And uh, uh, th that's a sweet family. And I'm so happy that uh, we get to be a part of them and many other missionaries as they spread the gospel across the globe. Now, Joel uh, gave me one of his prayer cards. We're going to hang it in this room. And when we see it, we're going to pray for them. But there's something that we can do for the rest of our missionary friends, and that's pray and give. And that's why uh, we have decided to issue a challenge to the whole church. That's right. It seems like a lot. $1,000 is a lot. But uh, we're going to do it. And yes, I'm offering up my dignity. 
<laughs> for the cause. And we're not just talking about my family are putting our money where our mouth is, and we are putting the first $100 down for the $1,000 challenge. Now, some of you may not be able to give uh, $100. That's okay. Some of you may not be able to give $10. That's okay. Some of you only have just a couple uh, of pennies. But I'll tell you what I tell the kids all the time. I believe that God takes what we freely give to him, and he multiplies it to the needs of the missionaries. So take your gift. Ask God to bless it before you give. And we're going to see God work all over the globe, and we get to be a part of it. Hey, kids! Yes, I'm so ready to worship today with you guys. And we're going to do a, a, a couple of songs that we've done before here at Kids Church. You may not know them, so I've got Seth and Micah and Eva here to help with the motions today. It's Matthew 7, 24. It's about the wise man who built his house on the rock. So watch these guys real quick. We're going to go through these motions. You ready? All right. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man, is like a wise man, is like a wise man. And sometimes we do this. Then there's a second part to it, right? Yep. Then the rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall. Yet it did not fall. Yet it did not fall. Did not fall. Right? And we're going to remember to do this part. Built his house on the rock. House on the rock. Okay? And any time that there's just some music playing, you dance like you never danced before. Let me see some dance moves. Awesome. Y'all ready to worship? Let's worship! These words of mine Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine And puts them into practice Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine These words of mine These words of mine Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine And puts them into practice It's like a wise man It's like a wise man It's like a wise man like a wise man who builds his house on the rock Foundation on the rock. Go! 
that song, Learning Scripture, about the Bible, which we learned about last week. It's our foundation. It's the rock. Well, we're going to slow it down and just worship God with a song that I love. It's How Great Is Our God. And it, it, right now, you can lift your hands up high or maybe down low, however you like to. Maybe you just you want to pray, put your hands to pray. It's okay. You can close your eyes tight, but let's worship God together.
first. Doug, you make things fun. I believe these kids can do it. Yeah. Okay. And it's an important verse, Doug. You know why? Why? It's it's one of the. Because it's really long. Long. No, it's it's what it stands for. It teaches us about the Trinity. What's the Trinity? It's. Well, the Bible doesn't really call it true. We, we call it the Godhead, three in one. God the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. They're all one. They're one true God. That's what we're learning about today. That's cool. Yeah. So our memory verse talks about the Holy Spirit descending. That word means coming down on Jesus, who's being baptized. And then the heavens open up, and you hear the voice of God say, This is my Son, whom I love. Isn't that fantastic? Wow. Yeah. So that's why it's an important verse, and we're going to do it all together. Doug, can you help us out? Sure. All right. Let's do this. And, and the Holy Spirit in bodily form descended on him like a dove. And the voice from heaven said, You are my dearly loved Son. And you bring me great joy. Luke 3. Luke 3. 22. 22. Awesome. Oh, kids. Y'all did a fantastic job. And thank you, dog. You always make this so much fun. Yes. I love memory verses. What do you need to ask, dog? So why in the middle of the, like, at the part where three and then the two side by elbow? Well, because like there's two dots on there. Oh. And, uh, two sideways eyeballs. Look at him. He's yeah. got the two sideways eyeballs. Two sideways eyeballs. Yeah. All That's right. why I like that. I like doing that because it's fun. It is fun. And I like doing blue reverses because it's fun. Well, yeah. kids, can you tell Doug thank you and thank you, Doug, for coming. Let's tell the kids at home. We'll we'll see them here in a minute with the rest of our lives. Bye, guys. Bye, kids. All right. So. We promised Lane we'd, we'd, we'd find God. We'd talk about the one true God and, and understand that. Now, do you believe there's a God? Uh, yeah, I believe that there is a God. Well, that's a great start because, you know, there's some people who don't believe it, there's a God. Really? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, they, they, say, they make excuses. They say things like, I've never seen God, so how do I know there's a God? Now, I've never seen God. Have you ever seen God? Uh, I don't remember seeing God. Yeah. I, I've never seen him physically, but I know without a shadow of a doubt that he is here for me. He created me. He loves me. Now, Billy Graham said, uh, have you ever seen the effects of the wind? Or have you ever seen the wind? No, I've never seen the wind before. Me neither. But I've seen the effects of the wind. You know, when the wind blows and, and it stirs, stirs up some leaves we can see that we feel the wind in our hair, on our face. You know, that's how we know the wind exists. And we know God exists by looking at his creation and being a part of it. We know that seeing the sunset and the sunrise, and that's beautiful. And, and beauty can't come from nothing. It's, it comes from God. And we see him around us and working through us and in us. And so we know there's a God. And so you... Just believing there's a God. At first, that's a great start. Now, we got to figure out who God is, though, right? Yeah, we do. Now, there's a lot of people that, out there that say, my God is the right God. And we as Christians, we say that our God is the right God. Yeah, right. Now, this has happened from the beginning of time. There's been this wrestle that our God has always been there throughout time, and he's proven himself time and time again. So Isaiah tells us, let me find that, Isaiah 45, 21 said, uh, not, yes, it's 21, it says, was it not I, the Lord, for there is no other God but me, a righteous God and Savior, there is none but me. God calls it out, he says, I'm it. I'm here for you. I'm the righteous God, which means I make you right before me. He gives us a way, you know, to, to live a right life. And he is the only one. Oh. Later on, we learned that he's a jealous God. Well, that's, 
kind of scary, you know? But it's not. He, he won't share us with anybody else. He wants us. He created us to be with him. Well, in, in, in the book of Kings, 1 Kings, let me go to it real quick. 1 Kings chapter 18. Now, I'm not going to read this story. I'm going to let you at home, parents, if you'll take time and read this with your kids. But I will tell you the story. And you know what? Lane's going to help act it out today. Really? Yes. Wow, that sounds so, like so much fun. We'll see if you still think it's fun after, after we do this. No, it's going to be fun. Okay. Uh, so Lane's going to be the prophets of Baal. Yes, plural, prophets. There was many prophets of Baal, and there was only one prophet left of God, and that was Elijah. So it was Elijah against the prophets of Baal, and there was a challenge issue. We'll make an altar, okay? You'll make one for Baal, and I'll make one for God, Yahweh, and we will put our sacrifices on it and pray. And whichever God ignites the, the, the sacrifice is the true God. Right? Okay. So they couldn't light it on fire because that's what they normally did. They, they burnt the sacrifice to God. And the sacrifice was usually like a bull or a ram that was given up. So in this case, Elijah let the prophets of Baal go first. And, and they built their altar, and they, they set it up all pretty, and then, then they begin to do their little prayer. So, pretend like you're praying. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they would pray. And then Elijah stood around and waited a minute, and it's like, hey, uh, maybe your God can't hear you. Maybe you need to pray a little louder. So the, the prophets of Baal, they kind of got a little crazy. They prayed a little louder, and they're like, yeah, they, you know what? Hey, you know what? Maybe your God is asleep and he doesn't hear you. So they would bang drums and they would dance around and yeah. <laughs> all the prophets. You know what? Elijah was poking fun at him and he says, guess what? You know what? Maybe your God can't hear you because he's going to use the bathroom. He's stuck in the bathroom. He's going potty. That's what he told him. Or maybe your God just doesn't hear you at all. And so the prophets were so desperate that they would they cut themselves and they would bleed out and yell and scream and dance. And finally, Elijah was like, okay, y'all had your time. Now let me show you my God. And so Elijah, he gets their uh, attention by starting to make, you know, uh, an altar, and it was usually some stones stacked up. So we're going to do some stones here. All oh, stones are never exactly the same, and, and I can't draw. So I'm just going to put them here and kind of make an altar like this. And then they put something across to put the sacrifice on, and we'll put sacrifice on here. And this this is what Elijah did. But it didn't stop there. He didn't just build this altar and put the sacrifice on it. He had them dig a trench around it. What was in the trench? Well, nothing just yet. Oh. Okay. He dug a deep trench. And then he told them to go and gather water. Water. Now, they didn't have water hoses. And, and they weren't exactly by a creek. So they would go and get these clay jars and carry water in. And he said, bring it and dump it in. And what they did was they covered his, his altar and sacrifice with water so much that it filled this trench up with water. Now, I know we're not supposed to play with fire, but last time I checked, you used water to put out fire, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So why would you put water on something that you're trying to burn to prove that there is a God. Yeah, I don't know. Well, Elijah knew that he served the one true God. And I believe in the one true God, too. And just like we didn't see God, he saw the effects of God, he knew. So Elijah did what he did. He had them Put water. I'm going to pour some water on this. 
when he prayed. He said, God, you know, I know you're the one true God, and, and uh, you know, I just believe in you right now. And his prayer was probably deep and, and reverent and, and acknowledged who God was. And all of a sudden, what? What's going fire on? came down from heaven. Now, fire's not coming down from heaven here. I just lit this. The, the Bible says that fire came down from heaven and ignited the sacrifice. Not just burnt up the sacrifice, but it burnt up the altar, the stones. It sucked up all the water till there was nothing left. Whoa. Yeah. That's amazing. It is amazing. We serve an amazing God. Now, when this had happened, the nation of Israel came back to God. And all the prophets of Baal, they were, they were sent away and they were killed because they led all of God's people the wrong way to worship Baal. Now, we worship God. There's one true God. But then we talk about, on Easter, who do we talk about? Anybody remember? Uh, Easter What's Easter Bunny. about? Easter Bunny? Well, you know, there, we, we have fun with the Easter Bunny. But remember, kids, I said it's not Happy Easter, it's Happy Resurrection Day. When we talk about Jesus, the Son of God. So, hold on for a second. We're going to clean up here, and we're going to talk about Jesus, the Son of God, and the Trinity. All right, Lane, kids. I hope that helped a little bit. I love that story of Elijah. Well... We're going to continue on with this. Remember I said there's two parts to this. There's one true God, and then there's the Trinity. Really? How can there be, be, be one true God if there's God the Spirit, God the Son, and God the Father? Well, I know that can be confusing, right? The Bible tells us uh, a little bit more about that. You know, in our scripture today, the, the memory verse that we learned, in Luke 3.22, it says... And the Holy Spirit, in bodily form, descended on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, You are my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. See, in that moment, we have the three in one, right? Jesus is being baptized. So we have God the Son, Jesus being baptized. And as soon as he's baptized, when he comes back up, it says the heavens open up. And the Holy Spirit, in bodily form, as a dove, descends down. It means flying dove. Flies down. And then a voice says, this is my dearly loved son. Wow. It brings me joy. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Now, I get that it can be confusing. So we have some items here that Lane's going to help with. And hopefully, by the end of this, we get a better grasp of the one true God. God the Father, Jesus. Holy Spirit are one. So I've got a couple of items here. We're going to start with an apple. It's just a plain apple. There's nothing special about it. It's just a red apple. And I'm going to let Lane use a knife here. Now, kids, if you if you want to show this to a friend or something, make sure you have permission from your parents. And it's probably best if you let them cut the apple for you, okay? But I'm going to let Lane cut this apple. Cut it in half. Be careful, please. Yeah, I will. Watch your fingers. Watch your fingers. Careful now. There we go. Good job. All right. You take a half of an apple, and I'll take a half of an apple. Okay. Okay. Let's look at this apple. Can you can you zoom in on the apple real quick, please? Do you see the apple? Here we got the apple. Yeah? So the apple has three parts. The apple has its skin. It has its flesh or the inside, and then it has the apple core. Now, is any of that not an apple? Uh, no, they're all an apple. They're all an apple, but there's three parts to it. And you can't take any of the part away, it won't be an apple. If I take the apple core out of the apple, is the apple going to be an apple? Well, I don't think it would. I mean, yeah, I could cut it up and cut the apple core away and then you eat it, yeah. But apples can't grow on 
the wild without the core. Yeah. So there's three of them. What about, let's look at this. Here. Let's look at this. I've got something else that might help. Me. I'm going to do this part because it takes a little finesse and I might not even do it right. So we have an egg here, right? Okay. Everybody knows there's three parts of an egg, right? Yeah. So let's take a look at those parts real quick. We have the shell, and then I'm going to try to crack this ever so carefully, and then I'm going to separate the white out of it. Very carefully. There we go. There's the white. And there's a yolk, right? So we have three parts here. Can you see this? We have the white, we have the yolk, and we have the shell. There's three parts to it. Wow. Right? There's three persons in one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's kind of like an egg. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Okay, one final thing. One final thing before I keep making a mess here. You're going to need that knife again. So I'm going to give, give you this banana. I'm going to ask you to cut it in three equal portions, or as close to equal as you possibly can make it. Think you can do that? Yeah, I think I can do that. All right, I'm going to open it for you. Well, maybe it's a little ripe. Maybe you can try it maybe on the other end. Okay, why don't you open that one and show me. I don't like bananas, so I don't open them very often. There we go. He's got me beat. Okay, I'm going to... I want to... No, off. you're good. You're good. You're fine. Don't worry about it. You just sit up there. All right, so I want you to take that knife, and I want you to cut it in as three equal portions as you possibly can. Okay. Now, that's pretty good, but kids, does, do they look equal? Can you see that? They're not. And you know what? It's going to be super hard to make those equal pieces. It's just not how it works. But we can. I'm going to take that piece off. It's going to make it hard. We can ever so carefully, if I can do this without messing it up. Here we go. Whoa. We're going to split this banana into three equal parts. This is all a banana, right? Yeah. I close it up like that, that's one. And I'll take this, this is the right part of the banana, and, and the left part of the banana, and the back part of the banana, but they're all the banana. Yeah. Three and one. Y'all see that? Three and one. That is God. Now, normally I would hand out the banana and let the kids eat it, but you're at home. So get your parents to buy you a banana this week, split it, try to do that trick. If you're very careful, you can press your finger down the center and split it in the three ways and eat the banana and enjoy it that way. But uh, it's important that we understand that God loves us. Okay? Yeah. He loved us so much that he couldn't just stay up in heaven because we have this problem with sin. Sends all the bad things in our lives. Yeah. It's bad to him. So he sent Jesus, the Son, to come and die for us, as we learned about on Easter. And, and he paid our price for our sins so that we could have everlasting life. Now, Jesus uh, rose from the grave, and he hung out with the disciples for a little bit longer, and then the Bible says he ascended. Now, that's the opposite of the word we just learned in that scripture, descended. Right? This is ascended. He left. He went to heaven. And he told the disciples this. He says, I have to go so that a helper can come and help you. And that's where the Holy Spirit came in. We read in the book of Acts, uh, the day of Pentecost, that the Holy Spirit came. But in our scripture today, we see all three. And these are building blocks of our faith. Last week, we learned about the word of God as our foundation. Now we're learning about the one true God gave us his word. And then he's three in one. Well, I hope I helped you out today. Yeah, you helped me a lot. I think I understand now. Awesome. Thanks, Lane. Thanks for hanging out with us. 
thanks for helping us with our Bible study and our, and, and our object lesson. Kids, I want you to take time this week, and I want you to pray about it. Go back and read the story in 1 Kings chapter 18. Go read our scripture in Luke 3.22, and, and pray that the Lord opens up your heart to all that he has for you. Well, I'm going to close in prayer, and then I will see you next week. All right? Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We love you that you, you cared so much about us, that you gave us your son, Jesus, to forgive us of our sins, and that, that you allowed the Holy Spirit to work in our lives so that we could be more like you. Lord, I ask that you would bless the children as they stay still at home, God, that you would give them uh, peace of mind during this hard time. Let them know that you love them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, kids, until I see you next week, I love you. I'm praying for you, and I want to see you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.